good shepherd. Good to see each one of you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. You know, life is uncertain, but one thing that I know is Jesus is constant. The Bible tells us that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm reminded that wherever I find myself in life, that there's nothing that God can't do. He has all power, and he has all authority. And I stand in that confidence today in the faith of Jesus Christ and in his word. Stand on your feet, if you would, today as we enter into worship. Oh, man. 
We have not had the invocation yet, so I don't break decorum. But I move to say I'm so thankful you love Jesus so much. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, since the beginning of time, God has revealed his will to seek and to save that which was lost. No matter how often we have entered the gates of God's place, whether often or rarely, because of sin we are all lost on our own and helpless. Let us therefore approach God in humility to receive his forgiveness. O oh God, I believe in you. O oh Lord, I trust your promise to save me. Forgive me for my sins in thought, word, and deed. Come to me, though I am not worthy. Come to me with your promise, with your touch of forgiveness, healing, help, and life. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Beloved, God has come to you in grace and mercy. Upon this, your confession as a called and ordained servant of the word and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the people say, Amen. Let us pray. O God, our Redeemer, according to your gracious promise and gift of salvation, help us now in any anxiety or fear to believe in your love and power, to deliver us and restore to us your gift of life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the Holy Scriptures. Thank you. Today's first reading is from Genesis chapter 9, starting with verse 8. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it will be a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between Noah, between God and every living creature of all flesh on the earth. God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant that I've established between me and all the flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Today, second reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, starting at verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved friends of God, in the honor of our Savior Jesus Christ, please rise. For the Holy Gospel. After the Gospel, dear friends, Miss Teresa will take children who wish to to go with for Children's Church. I let you know ahead of time that the homily will begin with what's called a dramatic 
a drama homily. From Mark 6, as follows. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida. While he dismissed the crowd and after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at a Gennesaret and moored to the shore. When they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A song of praise to our God. Thank you.
in my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in the eyes, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Love, grace, and peace to you, God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Turn 85, turn 86, turn 87, turn 88, turn 89. What, Lord? Yeah, right. 300. 300. Ham, Shem, Jopeth with a stake here. We had no church. Things were really bad then. You don't understand. You are so blessed. Now, right here, the Lord wants it 300 cubits. At that time, it seemed like everything was destroyed. I don't even mean before, I mean before the flood. We have to understand something. Our God is holy. He is just. People today, I hear stories of the land and time you live in. It is a joke. He is mocked. Sin is celebrated, and I can't understand with what I saw, what I lived before the flood, and with the flood, if they knew, but I'm told they do. We didn't have the Word of God written down, we, and didn't have a church. We didn't have pastors in my time, as the, the Word of God was written later and tells you 
the Lord God in his grace and mercy found me righteous, but I was the only one. The thoughts, as you remember, for the, the word as he would later write down, of everyone was only evil all the time. It was so hard to live. It was so painful. And the things we saw that human beings did to other human beings in the mockery of life itself, it was painful to watch. I know you can't understand because it's not your fault. I don't mean that, but, but you live in a people of God. You are in a community of faith and, and this thing called the church now. What God's Son did for you, Jesus, and all of you are here, but to be what I lived, it was I was alone. I had my wife. I had my sons and their wives, but it was alone. We were mocked when we built. We were laughed at. We were scorned. I had to preach righteousness to the people. Set the stake there. Build it. Hew. Take down the wood. Cut it down. Make it. Bring it to pass. Do what the Lord said. He said we would be spared. We have to do this. A cataclysm is coming. You see, you, you still have, yes, you have sin going on in the world. But this was global. This was a storm of sin itself, alone, of a global population, I was alone. You don't know what loneliness is until you experience you're the only one that worships God. And maybe you do sometimes. Maybe you feel, maybe you felt like you're in a storm. Mm, that's what it was like. God, though, was going to counter. God had to counter. See, God is changeless. In the beginning, he created. It was very good. It was perfect. There was no sin. It was life. It was so beautiful. From the time this carried on down from Adam and his beloved, his wife, and, and then their, their son, Seth, would carry the story down about for instance, everything from the time of the fruit to the time of what Cain did to Abel. And it only continued, that sin. But so did amazingly the promise of God. And he was going to spare a remnant. But now we have this event, and I know you weren't there, but I will share the sounds if you could have heard it, because it was time. It was time. The pitch was on the outside. The tar, it was covered. The cataclysm of the judgment against the sins of the world. We would be protected inside. And then the door was shut. The waters came up. The rains came down. You can't imagine the sound of thought until it is within the ark. And you realize the whole world is on the outside. Every living being, but me, my precious, my queen, my beloved wife, my sons, their wives, and the living animals that the Lord brought to us in, in, in order that they would be brought in, they would be preserved as well. But now all there is is the sound, for instance, of the waters rising, the waters coming down. At first, you'll wonder, you hear things as we begin to float, and it rocks, you hear things against the hull, you know, and you'll you wonder, and, and you go in your minds, and you remember the sounds. You could hear the sounds back in, before you got on board. The people were still in revelry, you know. They were being married and given in marriage, and they were feasting and partying, and, and, and you heard the marketplace and songs, and people would sing in the instruments, and, but it was all this vile revelry. And now there's just... Silence, except for, of course, the cattle lowing, the little sheep, the animals, the big cats purring, everything made gentle by the Lord, and the family worried and crying and praying and orders, hurry, hurry, more food, bring more food over, feed this, feed this cage here, feed this cage, you, Sam, Ham, Jaffas, feed them. No, we need to, we need more water for them to drink for the giraffes. But that silence, despite all the sounds going on, the outside world, 
we couldn't even yet imagine he was gone. And the rains come down not one day, all day, all night, two days, three days, four days, five days, 10 days, 15, 16, 40 days. It finally stops the rain, but it's not done. We remain on there, pitching about upon the seas there, and the women, they're war worried, praying, Lord, please have mercy. Please, may you spare all we had despite judgment all surrounding us was only faith. Faith that God did not lie. That was the problem at the beginning, wasn't it? No, God is true. We are preserved. And then finally about our calendar was lunar about 370 days. A year later, with, with that, that dove, I set the dove out and he brings back this, this piece of green and, and finally it was time. It came to rest. And we go up there, open the door, and we look outside. And you know how you remember a place you grew up, a place when you were married and you saw the wonderful scenes and the things. You recall with your beloved, like I did with my queen. Yes, and we used to dine overlooking the, 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 the peacefulness of the valley there. You walk out of the, and the cities and where you used to shop, you walk out of the Ark now, and it's all gone. Wiped. No sign of civilization, no sign of a single city, no sign of a single town, no sign of a human being, no sign of animals. Me, the family, the living creatures with us, they come out and it's wiped. Thousands of feet or cubits, as we called it, of water with thousands of pounds of pressure and the tides rising and surging with each pass and spin and the moon pulling upon them like a giant wash tub and we used to scrape the dirt off our clothes. Cities removed from the map and we looked and behold, it's gone. And we wonder, what do we do now? Did, did you ever have a storm? Did you ever have a storm and you walk out and you look and everything's gone? And we didn't know what to do. What do you do? What do you, there's nothing. I don't see anything. There's nothing I recognize. Not the earth, not the ground, the forests. Did you know that even the forest wiped gone? How do you walk out from that into that? Oh. As hard as it may seem and impossible in the face of such judgment, the man has had ceaselessly only evil all the time, their thoughts and the deeds in turn. All there was, there's nothing but faith. So we built an altar and gave thanks. You were spared. We listened to God. God spoke. I established my covenant with you. I put my bow in the heavens for you to see when it rains, and I will never, I repeat, never, never, never again, he promised, would I destroy all life in a flood. God, that same word in the language my people spoke, a bow for a battle bow of a warrior king in battle, he hung that up, that bow now, the battle was done, and I bid you peace. For peace, thank you. Listen to the word, and we had peace work to do. We planted first thing a vineyard. We went forth. Civilization had to be built again. There were rules. There were laws. Don't shed anyone's blood. Don't do these things that God despises. Sin is a problem. I know the world mocks it and thinks you can do this and that and the other to children and to women and even to fellow men. But God says no. And God is holy. So how? Well, the only thing possible was his word. He proved himself true at the, before the fall and after the fall. And now at the event, we built this thing that everybody mocked us for. Now we come out and all we have to cling to is what? This promise of grace. Despite our sins, he covered, he washed them 
away in the flood too. Well, pastors back, friends. <laughs> Have you ever been in a storm? In the midst of the storm, there is chaos. There is fear. You wonder, how will you make it? Will you make it? Are you going to get through it? See, storms, every storm that is a natural cataclysm that has hit the earth since the fall has been begun because there is sin in the world. Let me say that again and remember, all the storms that take place are the result because there's sin in the world. Creation and its perfection before sin was perfect. It was beautiful. It was precious. It was very good, as the Lord says. Only with the advent of sin do storms come about. But beloved, there is beyond this a greater signifier what I mean by storms. And you and I both have experienced it in our lives. It is the storm of sin. It is the rage of sin. Now, whether it was us, indeed, we do sin. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. We remember, Lord, as Noah warned us, we remember, may we not go that way, O God, but may we also, if we do, be forgiven. But in that sin, there comes a problem that God at times must stop sin. God must come, and he does deeds that frighten us. In other words, a judgment may hit. Or perhaps we've been sinned against by another. And we can see how the storm hits, but after the storm we come out of our little ark. In other words, being a people of God in our marriage, in our family, whatever the structure is. And we look at that event after the fact and it seems like sometimes the storm was so bad it looks like everything's wiped and nothing looks the same ever again. You wonder, how are we going to carry on? Just like Noe and speaking to his wife and his sons to this. How do we go on? What do we do? We need some kind of direction. Oh, wait, what did they do? The altar. Thanks. Listen. Believe in all those as well as then. We must go forward. After the storm, thank you, God, for delivering us and then listen to his word, but also the promise of his grace because the only thing that can possibly counter the knowledge of a holy God who wills that we do not sin is to know God then not hidden in the storm, not hidden while we are hiding within the ark, but God who became flesh had his arms out wide and his hands nailed to the cross where he was crucified on Calvary. There we can have the faith to begin to take our steps after the storm and realize God's will now is for life after the storm as it was for them to build, to go on, to fill the earth, and just as for us also in our marriages, in our families with our children and with our parents and in a community of a people of God, God's will is life. But that life must come through his son. Now we come to the gospel text. Here in the gospel text, last week we had Jesus feeding the thousands. People, remember the story, they were running to him. They were coming out of all of the towns trying to find Jesus. They heard about him. Some of them already had experienced him. It was the fulfillment of the word. He fed them, them the thousands with the few morsels of food. Now our gospel today, that event has ended. He sends the disciples, as you heard or you read, away in the boat to the other side, to Bethsaida. He dismisses the people, and Jesus goes up alone onto a mountain to pray. And there it becomes late at night. It is the fourth watch now. That's between three and six in the morning. We're in first century Israel. And at that time, there are no electric lights. There are, in fact, not only no electric lights, but there happens to be a cloud cover because we're about to see a storm. So no starlight, no moonlight. It is as dark as dark as can be. A dark itself signifying 
what it was like to be in that ark without the light of a sun because the sky was full of nothing but rain. Now the Lord is there on the mountainside, but as he prays, the eyes of his omniscience cut through the dark of night miles and miles and miles away to there the tiny craft is facing a storm. And in that storm, that tiny craft is pitched. They are straining against the oars. But not only in this absolute darkness does our Lord incarnate flesh deity who at one time held the battle bow but put it to rest. Now there is come in lowly humanity form. Now our Lord not only sees the little craft bobbing on the waves all those miles away from a mountaintop, but even the ligature and strain of muscles as they fight the oars in the wind. And in an instant, now in his omnipotent power and his omnipresence, Jesus shows up from the mountain. And they look as he walks upon the raging seas as if they are supporting their creator's feet like they are granite from a mountain itself. And when they see him, his 12, they cry out as if it's a phantasm, a ghost in fear. But Jesus announces, take heart, I am, be not afraid. He steps into the boat. They arrive at the other shore, and they get out. Guess what? They thank God. He tells them, be not afraid. They listen, and they go to work. Our gospel text goes to the next point of this. The people see him again. They recognize him. It is morning now. They run from town to town, city to city, like they were before, the hundreds and then the thousands. They are dragging their sick on mats. It is the Lord. There is only one who has power over wind and waves, only one who holds the power, can release or shut off the deep, and here he's in the flesh. The one foretold, they bring their lame, they bring their crippled, they bring their ailing, they bring their dying, they bring dying, the ones who are possessed, and they try even just to touch the hem of the tassel of his robe. And indeed, when they do, they are healed because God has come into the world in flesh not to destroy, but now to save. And he's going to do it like this. Soon, they will take that Lord of glory. Born of the virgin, so vulnerable, he came as a baby, grew up, and they would throw a storm upon him of their hate, their rage. But they could not kill him. He's the one with the battle bow, but now come in peace. Instead, he came in authority, authority to lay that life down. He sets himself down upon the wood. They take him. They drive nails in one hand, nail in the other, then in his feet. They raise the cross up, and people look at him, and they mock him. And then the sun all of a sudden becomes dark. For the judgment of the sins of the world are taking place on Jesus, God's own son. He cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because the load of not just from Adam to the end, but all those who perished in that giant diluvian epic that the entire world to this day and all the ancient civilizations remembers, all of them were laid upon him as he became our substitute, bearing it all, so that when he gave up the ghost and died, after the storm, the soldier took the spear, pierced his side, and he gushed a flood, a sacred flood, water mingled holy blood that cleansed you and I of all of our sins. Dear friends, on the third day after the storm, he rose. Before he ascended, as they gave thanks to who he was, he spoke to them and they listened. And then he told them, it's time to get to work. Go, therefore, all authority has been given to me. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them everything whatsoever I have taught you to keep. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. 
Dear friends, fear not. Even after the storm, the Lord is at your side in your marriage and your family. He who is the way maker and can do anything, he, the power from on high, who's done the greatest thing of all, has forgiven you all your sins. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith. Let's stand for a moment. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated to give your gifts to the Lord, beloved of God. Thank you. The offering. Does it 
stand a chance when I'm standing your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing. Oh, Lord, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your love. When I'm standing up, when I'm standing, Jesus, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your Lord. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your love. Oh, I'm standing in your love. Stand But in honor of our God, let us please stand for prayer. Merciful God, our Holy Father, Almighty God, God with authority and power who created the deep, God the Holy Spirit who hovered upon the face of the waters in the beginning, God the Son who with the Father and the Spirit is one God, formed man from the dust of the ground and made him a living being. Dear God, who in mercy made the promise to send your Son to save despite our sins. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and grace. That you, O oh Lord, in your graciousness beheld Noah and you saved a remnant for the world, for salvation, for the promise in his very loins and that of Shem as well to bring to pass the arrival one day of your Son. Dear God, you are just, dear God, you are holy, whether we understand or not. And we confess, O oh Lord, that we have been through storms in life, that we have beheld our own sins and the things that came about as a result. We have beheld the sins of others and who are us and beheld the things as a result. But dear Lord, after the storm, we praise you by your Holy Spirit, you enabled us to look out on a terrain that seemed that our lives that it was wiped and nothing we knew was familiar anymore. But no matter how different, oh God, we thank you. Enable us now by your Spirit to listen to you and also, dear God, to go forward in our lives to serve you. There is work to do. Heal us, O oh God, where there is guilt and shame. Wash it by the crimson flood and tide that came from Jesus' body, his blood, his veins, the sacrament of his heart. Help us, O oh God, to behold ourselves that way, to have assurance and comfort that we are your child and will not be destroyed. Help us, O oh God, to behold each other and others as well, the same way, cleansed by the sacred blood. Help us to forgive when we otherwise without you cannot forgive. Help others, O oh Lord, to forgive us for they who cannot forgive. Strengthen us, O oh God, in the task of the work of the gospel now in this church, your church in the world, in our ministries, in our school. For, O oh Lord, there are many in the flood who are in a cataclysm, the storm of sin, and the great judgment of all is coming at the return of your Son one day at the end. But, Lord, beyond is a glory. Give us the faith to cling to what is ahead, the resurrection of us all, and the time in which you will wipe every tear. But many need to be saved. Move your church to do the work of the word of God that you've commissioned, to be a preacher of righteousness like Noah, to proclaim your law, but also your gospel, the good news of Jesus, your son, that, Lord, we know now that it is your will that we be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. Thus, Lord, here we are. Send us, use us. We understand there's work to do. Be with the sick, O oh Lord, our loved ones and those who grieve. 
we plead you the sacred blood that came from Jesus' side and from his hands and his brow from the thorns and his bruises and the stripes upon his back. Dear God, we pray for each loved one within our mind right now that you would heal them, O God. And you would heal them from the greatest storm of all, the cataclysm of that curse, the suffering. Give them thus faith amidst the things that they cannot understand. Strengthen them that they will also then be able in spirit to stand strong. And may they, O oh Lord, whatever the outcome, be a living testimony to others that you are our God, that you are just, you are holy, but you are also mercy full of grace, and you so loved the world you gave your only son. Finally, Lord, be with the land and the world and the land where we are earthly citizens of. And that is, Lord, a time now in which we need you more than ever. We pray that you would deliver man from the grips of the dragon, that you would make a way through the seas that we may be able to finish the work of the Great Commission. Cause leadership to do what is just and what is right, not what is sinful. We pray that you will protect those also who protect us at home and overseas because the machinations of man still wish to take down their own battle bow and do harm. Be with those usly who have laid their life upon the line with their families as well. Be the husband to the orphan and the husband rather to the, to the widow and the father to the orphan. These and all things, us dear God, we raise to you. In the holy name above every name, Jesus, who himself has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before the blessing, we invite you to dine with us. We thank Mr. Joseph Peter for the meal. Christ's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. A final song to our Lord.
Yeah. 